So tumor classifications are done for many reasons. They range from helping individual patients manage their diseases to helping studies get done, for example, clinical trials or experimental studies involving cells or animals. And then at the next level, they help epidemiologists and governments figure out what causes disease. By classifying the disease, you can then study it and find out what causes it and then devote resources by governments or by insurance companies to addressing the healthcare needs of patients with those diseases. For about a hundred years before, tumors were classified by the pathologist looking at a small piece of the tumor given to the pathologist by the surgeon, looking at that small piece under the microscope. And the pathologist could stain the tissue in different ways, but the bottom line was you were looking under a microscope and coming up with a pattern, and that pattern was then matched to a pattern's name in a classification. So it was not only the CNS WHO group that decided to revisit it. The whole field of pathology and cancer medicine in general has undergone a revolution over the last two decades or so, where we all of a sudden know a lot of the genetic underpinnings of these tumors. And those genetic underpinnings are changing the way we think about classifying them, but also the way we think about treating the patients who have the different types of tumors. So it was clear to the field at large that we needed to think about this beyond simply the microscope. So what we did in 2014 was put together a group of leading people in the field of CNS tumor classification. And we had a meeting, which has been called the Harlem meeting, and which published its guidelines which looked at whether the field of CNS tumor classification was ready yet to do what the hematologic cancers had done a few years earlier. And the answer was a resounding success. Yes, let's go ahead and do it. With some caveats that it would have to be done in a careful, deliberative way. So the major takeaway is that the diagnoses of many CNS tumors, but not all CNS tumors, but the diagnosis of many CNS tumors will no longer be based only on the microscope, but on the microscope plus genetic analysis. That's the major conclusion and the major difference and for some of the tumors, they are common tumors. For example, if you're talking about adult brain tumors, glioblastoma is one that now gets a genetic analysis in addition to the microscope analysis.